This is the You Show Podcast. This is King trying to take it Hello, everyone, and welcome in to the You Show podcast. I'm Chris Treft. I'm with Ben Gesselson of the Des Moines Buccaneers, and that would be a little more relevant for this episode because our special guest today is former Des Moines Buccaneer, Stanley Cup champion, a long resume of a lot of success, Trevor Lewis. This is a fun one for me, and I've had the pleasure of, of chatting with Trevor before doing some content for our social media with the Bucks and He's a wonderful guy, a wonderful ambassador of the game, and you said it, Chris, his career, when you look at it from top to bottom, really speaks for itself. This is a guy that has achieved at every level of hockey. Uh, you've mentioned the NHL, those two Stanley Cups. He's lived some dreams for a lot of kids. He had a, a game six game-winning goal in the Stanley Cup final that we talked about with him. He was a USA Hockey Junior Player of the Year when he was in Des Moines. He won a Clark Cup championship there, uh, along with the likes of Kyle Oposo on that roster, Jeff Petrie on that roster. It was probably the best Buccaneers team to ever be assembled, and there has been some really fantastic Bucs teams over the years. But that team was loaded with talent, and he was, at the time, probably the most talented on that roster, though I think he'd tell you what Poso was. But uh, it was really fun to get to chat with him about his time in Des Moines and, and about his career as a whole because uh, he's had an interesting journey for sure. He, he didn't come from the hotbed of, of a Canadian city or a Minnesota or uh, out east in Boston or Michigan. He, he was born in Utah and had to go through Colorado to make his way to Des Moines in the first place. So. Uh, he's a true story about sticking with his guns and sticking to his guns, I should say, and, and being a champion of the sport, even though he's not from what you'd call the hockey centric area in the state of Utah. So I, I think that's enough rambling for me. Um, let's get right to it because uh, Trevor's a great interview and he gave us a lot of time, uh, which is something that we're always very grateful for. Normally, I would make fun of you at this point for talking about the Buccaneers so much, but this <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. you get a pass, so don't worry. You're not going to get chirped for being a homer because you are totally allowed to do it in, in this terms because now we hear from former Des Moines Buccaneer Trevor Lewis. Pleasure now to be joined by a former USHL Forward of the Year player, a former USA Hockey Junior Player of the Year back from when they were handing out that award in the 2006 season with the Des Moines Buccaneers. Oh, and by the way, a two-time Stanley Cup champion and current member of the LA Kings, Trevor Lewis. Trevor, we appreciate this time you're taking with us, and it's great to catch up with someone who has had winning follow him all the way back to the USHL. First and foremost, how are things with you and the Lewises right now? Uh, you know, we're, we're hanging in there. I got to, uh, I got a twin, uh, two year old. So, um, most of our time is, uh, just kind of going to them and, and trying to keep them busy somehow. And, um, you know, trying, trying to get them to burn a little energy as much as they can during the day. So now they can sleep good at night. But other than that, uh, we're all healthy and, um, we're just hanging in there, uh, trying to, trying to figure out things to do for them. So you've gone from full-time hockey player to part-time hockey player now and part-time entertainer, you might say, on your end with the kids. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> it, uh, I mean, my, my wife's a, a stay-at-home mom, and, you know, it, it, being being here all the time, it really makes you appreciate uh, what, what they do day in and day out. And um, it, it's definitely a lot of work, and it, it's not an easy job for sure. No question. Well, you've put in a lot of work to get to where you're at. I want to rewind the clocks back to when you were coming into Des Moines as a Utah-born kid, but you played midget hockey in Colorado. What did you know about the city of Des Moines, and what did you know about the USHL when you were walking into the league back in 2004-2005? Uh, well, you know, growing up in Utah, I didn't know I didn't know much about hockey outside Utah at all. I, um, I, I mean, my dream you know, always, I think, as a, a little kid, it's uh, to, to play in the NHL and, and to win the Stanley Cup, you know, but it's a lot harder than you think. And 
um, when I was 15, I moved away to Colorado and, um, that's kind of when I first started taking hockey, uh, seriously and, and just playing, playing hockey. And that's kind of when I learned about the USHL and, and how good of a, a league it is and, um, how good of a way it was to get a scholarship or play junior or whatever you wanted to do. And, um, you know, coming into the league, I, I didn't know much, much about it. I actually was, was planning on playing in the North American league. Um, and I got a call from Bob Ferguson, um, and said they had a spot for me and, and I packed up my things right then and, and drove to Des Moines. And, uh, I, I really, I'd never been to Iowa. I'd never, never really even really heard of it. And, and I got there and, um, you know, I just kind of took, took it in stride. And, uh, I mean, it turned out being one of the best decisions I've ever made. I remember you telling me we did a similar thing to what we're doing now last summer, but for the Buccaneer broadcast throughout the season. And you told me that you were shy when you first got to Des Moines and, and a little bit of a private kid when you got there. Do you remember who were some of the people, maybe they were teammates, like they were maybe Billick family members that helped you get comfortable in Des Moines? Yeah, I, I uh, my first year I lived with uh, Phil Pinter. He's from Austria and um, he was a very – funny kid very very outgoing and um you know I was kind of this shy kid and um you know he he helped me a lot with just uh getting to know guys in the room and and kind of just getting a little bit more comfortable and um you know and then and then from there I, I mean just just hanging out with the guys at, at school and stuff kind of got more comfortable that way now to the hockey side of things with you in Des Moines you had a major jump from your one to two in points. You had 22 points your first year. Your second year jumped to 75, 35 of those being goals. What changed for you individually and what changed from the team aspect for you to have such a drastic change? Uh, you know, the first year I was just kind of, I feel like I was just kind of feeling my way out and, and I didn't know really what I was getting into. And, um, you know, coming from midget, you know, when I was one of the best players to, to go into the USHL to, so knowing that I needed to learn how to, to be a better player and, um, you know, take, take it seriously off the ice as well. And I think, um, after my first year, uh, Reg Simon challenged me in the summer and, and wanted me to, to start, uh, getting stronger off the ice as, as well as on the ice. And, um, I kind of started taking my summer training seriously that summer and, I uh, came back and, gain gain a bunch of weight and um you know I, I think a big thing in hockey is always confidence and 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 reg reg had a lot of confidence in me and, and that helped me on the ice a lot and obviously with our team you know getting uh kyle Poso and colin bach and you know jeff petrie i mean the list goes on i mean when you have a good team your confidence is always high and um we had a great team going into that year and um you know it's just an exciting time well, you mentioned it, a loaded roster in your time there with the Bucks. Five players on that roster would end up playing in the NHL at some point. Three of them, including yourself, have had sensational NHL careers at this point. You mentioned Ocposo and Petrie. Are there specific things that those guys did on the ice in Des Moines that you can remember which would lead to them having successful careers such, such as yourself? Well, I, I mean, I think, uh, I think I definitely benefited from playing with Ocposo. I think a lot of the – the scouts came to, to kind of watch him and, and got to see me. I mean, he, he was, uh, he was such a good player, especially that young. I mean, he was, uh, he was already basically a man. I mean, he was so strong and you could just tell he, he had it and he was going to be a, a special player for sure from the beginning. And then with, uh, Jeff, I think he was similar to me coming in, you know, uh, very quiet kid kind of kept to himself, but, um you could tell he had the size speed and shot and when he got on the ice he was uh he was pretty fearless out there so you could tell he was going to be a, a great player as well are there any players that maybe didn't get the accolades that you guys got on that team that were essential to the clark cup championship and if so who are those guys um you know i think you know i think a big thing is everyone kind of kind of found a role and and with being on winning teams, you kind of learn that, you know, if, if everyone accepts their role and, um, you know, one guy might be thinking he should be playing a lot more, but 
you know, if, if it gets in a good situation where you get a good role, I think, um, and everyone knows their role and does a role, it, it really helps the team be successful. And I think we had a, a group that was very unselfish and, and would do anything for the team. And, you know, I think uh, a guy like Colin Bach was a, a big part of that team. And, um, you know, Ben Ryan and um, John Madney, I mean, everyone was, was, was very, very good. Clark Cup championship, two Stanley Cups later. What would you know about winning culture, Trevor? I mean, goodness. I don't know. I don't know if you're an yeah, expert on. on that by now or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, been fortunate to be with uh, with some good good teams and some good people, that's for sure. Talking about that Bucks season, we talked about some teammates. I want to talk about opponents, both teams and individuals. I know hate's a strong word, and we use it maybe a little too much in hockey, but it is something that I think people do love about our sport is that there is a little bit of that need to love to hate. Was there teams or players you remember just hating to play against? Of course, on the ice, maybe off the ice, you turn it off. But on the ice, who were those guys and teams that you remember from that season that were tough to go against? Uh, I remember uh, Cedar Rapids was was really good both my years. Uh, you know, Teddy Purcell, I ended up actually living with him my first year pro and playing against him. He was, uh, I mean, he wasn't a physical guy by any means, but he, out there he was, uh, he was so creative and then so hard to defend against. And I think he was always a problem. Um, they had Alex Daylock too in goal and he was, uh, he was, he was really good. And then, I mean, against in the finals against Sioux Falls, um, you know, they were, uh they were they were a really tough team and uh Ben Holmstrom is actually a friend of mine I played with him but I, I hated playing against him and we always had our battles and um you know I mean that, that was quite a quite a while ago but I remember that that Sioux Falls was a, a big battle for us for sure the building on Hickman Road the madhouse on Hickman currently called Buccaneer Arena it's had a lot of names uh, dating back to 1960 when it was built, of course, 1980 when the Bucks came in. But when you think about that arena, what are the memories that come flooding back for you about that building? Because in terms of character and legacy, it's about as fabled as they come in this league. And I do know I'm a bit biased when I say that, but I'm not sure there are many who disagree. Uh, I think I I love that place. I mean, um, that 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 building was awesome. I, I remember the. Uh, I don't know if they still do it or not, but when the visiting team came out, they played the circus song, whatever it was. The <laughs> yeah. I thought that I thought that was awesome, and you know, they, when we used to come out, they had the big fog machine going, and and it always get guys fired up, and um, it, it just felt like uh, it was always so loud because everyone was kind of on top of you, and um, you know, those were those were some of my my best memories, and um, yeah, I, I love that place for sure. The 2006 Clark Cup Finals were not won in Des Moines. You guys got the job done in Sioux Falls. And if my sources serve me correctly, there were fans jamming the parking lot at Buccaneer Arena when you guys got back late that night. It's about a four-hour drive from Sioux Falls back home. Uh, is that true? And then was there a parade? Did I hear that correctly as well? What was that whole fanfare experience like in the aftermath of that championship with a, a fan base that just loves winning? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was something else. I mean, I never, um, I never experienced uh, fans like that. You know, it was kind of my first step to junior hockey and um, it seemed like every game throughout both years, uh, the building was always packed and we always had such great support and yeah, after we won, we won in uh, Sioux Falls, and, you know, we had a, a good time in the locker room there, so we stayed there a little longer, and, you know, when we pulled back up, we were expecting just to, you know, get in the cars and, and kind of head home, and um, we showed up, and there was, I don't know how many fans there, but it was uh, it was definitely a special moment just to see how much they the, the fans cared and, you know, how into it um, they were, and, you know, how much support we had. From a playing perspective, your career, where do you think the USHL stands in terms of I saw my game develop the most in these areas and maybe even some off the ice areas too for you, Trevor? 
Well, in the USHL, it was definitely in the summer after my first year when I I definitely made my biggest stride with um, my off-season commitment and, and you know, and, and getting in the gym and, you know, really, really training instead of just, just skating and, and hoping my strength would come. I think that was a big thing for me. And I think, uh, you know, in a lot of ways that, that year too, my second year, it was, uh, was a time for me to learn leadership. I mean, coming back, uh, I got to be the captain and, you know, got to lead the guys to the final. And it was, uh, it was a good step for me and, in the leadership department and, and pretty much all areas of my game is probably one of my biggest growth years in, in hockey for sure. So we can't let you go without talking about Stanley cups. You have two of those. How, (laughs) how do those compare and how do those differ for those two championships? Um, well for the two cups or as compared to the, uh, the Clark cup, are you saying? Yeah. For for the two cups. Oh yeah. I mean, well, um the first one you know um we were the eighth seed coming in and and no one gave us a chance at all and and uh we played i think we played vancouver our first round um you know they were i think they won the president's trophy that year they were they were the team you know and um coming into game one uh we ended up winning and it was kind of like a I want to say it was like a feeling that everyone in that locker room got like, Hey, we won this game. We we can do this. Like, let's, let's keep going here. And, you know, and that, that year, 2012, it kind of seemed like uh, we were in the playoffs. We were just rolling. I mean, we were, we were winning games and, and we were getting like a week and a half, two weeks off before the next year because other teams were going to seven games and we were, we were finishing so quick. And then, uh, the finals, we we met New Jersey and, and ended up winning at six, and that was just uh, a feeling I'll never forget. I mean, being a being a kid, that's all you think about, and um, scoring two goals in, in the in the final game there was um, was pretty pretty special moment, and getting to share it with my my parents and everyone and friends and family on the ice with me after was was a cool moment, and then um, the second one, I mean. Uh, for the first one being, I don't want to say it was easy, but it, it felt easy compared to the second one because the second one was a complete battle and grind. I mean, we won three game sevens on the road. Our first series in San Jose, we were down three nothing. Um, everyone kind of wrote us off there, and we were, just took it one game at a time and, and just battled it out and grinded it out. And um, after the second one, you know, it was – it was like, wow, we, that was such a battle. And in the locker room after it was just a different feeling because it was like, you were so exhausted and just kind of, you just kind of wanted to to sit around and watch everyone, you know, have a, have a beer out of the cup. And um, it was just a different feeling, but it was um, one of the most special feelings I've ever had. Fellow USHL alum, Alec Martinez ended that series. So uh, some USHL pride there for that series winner from the former Cedar Rapids Rough Rider. Final question for me, uh, for you, Trevor, is someone like yourself now that has, you've won almost everything there is to win from a team perspective. Your career speaks for itself, not only in the USHL, but beyond, obviously, with those cups we're talking about now. There are players that, of course, want to follow in that path, guys that are entering into their junior eligibility years right now for you what do you maybe wish you knew that the nhl has taught you that you didn't know when you were coming into the league at the time um you know i i would say when i got drafted i thought i was gonna come into that i I thought i was kind of a big shot and i was gonna come into the nhl and you know put up my points and and you know play on the power play and stuff like that and then my first year i quickly learned that um these guys are there's some really really good players here and uh you know to 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 play in the nhl i I was going to have to learn to to focus on other things and and be good at um you know penalty kill and be very reliable so the coach could rely on you to put you on the ice and i just think it's it's important to you know even if you're a 30 40 goal scorer in in junior just to to make sure you 
work on all the other aspects of your game too. So, I mean, it, it helps to be on the ice as much as possible. And so you get noticed by coaches and, and scouts and things like that. And that's something I, I wish I would have learned uh, maybe before I tried to try to take that step in the NHL. To close this out, Trevor, I know Bucks fans will clamor to listen to this podcast because whenever your name comes up, they get glued to whatever it is. Any message for the Buccaneer faithful who I'm sure are listening intently here? Yeah, I mean, uh, I just want to say I miss you guys. Uh, I had some of my best and greatest memories uh, playing in front of you guys, and um, I hope you guys are all healthy and safe and um, you know, hopefully we can get through this time together. Well, Trevor, we wish you the same, both health and safety to you and your family and your, your two twin kids. And uh, best of luck as you continue that journey into your entertainment stretch of your career with your kids. And of course, <laughs> best to your wife. And thanks for this, Trevor. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you to Trevor Lewis for joining us on the You Show podcast. Another great guy. I feel like I say that so much. I don't know if it's I'm just repeating myself constantly or there's just that many good people that come out of the USHL. I think it's the latter, but nonetheless, it proves it once again with Trevor Lewis. Either that or guys that can really put on good faces. But then again, if they, if they really could put on good faces and weren't good guys, I mean, yeah. not that the USHL is not a great league, but – I don't think people would take the time to sit down with, with you and with humble you and I, Chris, if they really didn't oh. care about the game and care about the league and our good people. So um, Trevor was fantastic. Huge thank you there. And also to John Gomez of the LA Kings. And uh, not only for this, but uh, both Trevor and John with LA have been really great to the Bucks since I've gotten there um, and have helped us out on a, on a number of different occasions, giving us some content and some, some items that we've utilized through our social media to really kind of, open up the experience for players in Des Moines. And you talk about guys like Trevor Lewis and, and I know in our organization, we really try to key and focus on those guys because that's the pipeline to the NHL, right? We can showcase that if you come to Des Moines, you might be able to, to grow and get the life skills and the hockey skills to push yourself towards a, a great career, not only, potentially at the college level, but in the NHL as well, like we've seen from Trevor Lewis. So uh, a great and a very uh, generous thank you to Trevor and the rest of the Kings organization for helping us out on a number of different occasions. You get all out, Ben? Because this is your so. chance, because you're not going to be able to talk about the Bucks this much ever again. Well, no, we, no, we got another I, – I know we've got another one coming because we got an interview in the can. It's already done, so I know I'm going to get to be able to jump on my Buccaneer soapbox again down the road. So – I'm going to throw that right back in your face today, Chris. You met your weekly quota. so <laughs> yeah, Exactly. The, owner, the owners are happy. The owners listen to this and say, okay, good job, Ben. You got all the buck talk out. Way to go. Perfect. Well, yeah. another big thanks to Trevor Lewis and the Kings. They've given us uh, several interviews and have been extremely professional, as always, as the Kings are widely known as one of the most professional organizations in hockey and in sports. So thanks to everybody on that end. Thanks to Ben for all the help and Brent Meske. Behind the scenes, I'm Chris Treft, and this was the U Show Podcast. This is the U Show Podcast.